nice shoes, or hey, you really sing loudly, but you were way off key. Thanks for being enthusiastic. Well, Pastor Song reflection on Paul's preaching and teaching speaks volumes on the debate about the power of preaching and teaching in today's church. Paul wasn't afraid to preach and teach a fire and brimstone message. How about you? Are you not, are you afraid to speak solid, grounded truth in regards to what is taking place in this country today? Although we offer plenty of passages of encouragement, for example, Philippians 4, Paul kept the main thing, the main thing, keeping the focus on the war that's been going on since Adam and Eve, the fall in the garden. It is time to stop sugarcoating the gospel and teach and preach it with the power of salvation that reflects an eternal choice, heaven or hell. There is no room for complimentary sandwiches when it comes to eternal salvation. There is no room for complimentary sandwiches in today's arena of politics and what man is doing and what he's not doing. The truth must be told. You as an individual can tell that truth. Do you have the spiritual guidance of God to speak truth to the powers that are in place? Do you have the integrity to speak honesty and truth as a Christian? Paul's letter to the Church of Romans is sometimes referred to as the first gospel book because it, except by many scholars, as having been written at least six years before Mark's gospel. Why is such a claim made? Well, let's consider our revival themes and preaching and teaching about salvation. How many times have we gone down to the Roman road? We know that that road begins with humankind as God's enemy, but some continues with the redemptive power of Christ, resulting in humankind justification, sanctification, and final glorification. How many times have you traveled on the road, the road where God knocks you off your horse, knocks you off your pedestal, knocks you off your standards, knocks you off your big time, knocks you off and brings you down to your knees where you have to call out to Jesus Christ, God Almighty. How many times has God reminded you of the Roman road in which you were on, or whether or not you have been on the Roman road at all? Today's lesson, Paul's writing about humankind being God's enemies. In chapter 1, he condemns the unrighteousness of the Gentiles. Here is something for you. There is only two types of humans in the world. They are Jews and they are Gentiles. The Jews are God's chosen people. The Gentiles are the people who in which when Jesus Christ died on the cross were able to bring into the fold bring into the foes. Now in chapter 2, Paul does the same for his own people. Israel, he summarized in all this chapter that both Gentiles and Jews are guilty of unrighteousness. What happens to those who judge others? What is the judgment of God based on? What will the reward be for those who continue to seek God? What will happen to those who are self-seeking and don't obey the truth? What two groups of people did Paul mention in verses 9 and 11? What type of people, what two types of people? Of all the hallmarks, of all the hallmarks of the American justice system in that it's supposed to be equally applied to all regardless of race, color, and creed, ethnicity, or socioeconomic status, yet in practice, such equality has faced its challenges. The Apostle Paul made it clear in his letter to the Church of the Romans that God's justice was the same, whether the person was a Jew or Gentile. God's desire has been and is and always will be that all might be saved, both Jews and Gentiles. God's condemnation of both Jews and Gentiles, sinful nature is applied equally. God's grace is also at work as he offers his peace to both Jews and Gentiles. Yes, God began with his chosen people, Israel. However, Jesus sacrificed on the cross, opened the door to all. In doing so, God showed in practice that he is no, and has no respect, no respect a person. 
In light of the recent number of high-profile police-involved shootings of African Americans and the perceived, and I say perceived, 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 that means some see it one way, some see it another way, perceived rollback of the clock of American justice after the last president's election, today's lesson offers an opportunity for you to lead and to understand and to discuss God's impartial design for justice and salvation. Different from the salvation and justice that is played here on this earth, God's salvation is balanced, it's true. It is no harm and no evil in God's justice. It is balanced, it is actually true. He bases it on his truth, not on man's truth. How does God's models of justice compare and contrast to that of America's? You should leave and hope you leave with a strengthened belief in the impartiality of God. The impartiality of God. As we continue with more for you here on House of the Gospel, Blog Talk Radio. Don't go anywhere. If you want to call in, you can call 347-202-0317. We will stop at any time and take your call and discuss equity, equity for all. God's version of equity for all versus equity of man here on this earth. Stay with us as we continue with House of American Gospel, Blog Talk Radio, coming to you from 231 6th Avenue, down south here in the big city of Beatrice, Alabama.
powerful song. Powerful song. That's a powerful song by the Gospel Creators out of Atlanta, Georgia. Um, let me say this. Um, <clears throat> equity for all. Um, yesterday on Facebook and all over the media, there was a video of uh, pastors uh, from inner cities around America sitting down with President Donald Trump. Um, from the issues of faith based uh, worship, which is people of faith, of color, and all other nationalities, those who lack the equity uh, economic situation that a lot of us do enjoy, but pastors who minister to all of us, majority of which are being black pastors, and there was an outcry from many people about the fact that they were sitting down with this president, Donald Trump, the 45th president of the United States, which has said so many things that are beyond the imagination of normalcy of political arena. He has come in and really upset the normalcy of respect and decency, so forth, words that he used and things of that. It just takes people aback. And most people believe that he's a purveyor of lies, a lot of lies. But the thing about what's taking place in this country is that God is working something in this country. He's doing something in this country. Uh, when President Barack Obama was president for eight years, the Republican Party made it their business to make sure he got nothing done. This president, um, they say it was because of policy. Uh, they wanted to make him a one-term president. They really set out to block anything that he do anything that he did. But this president has come along and by executive order and other methods of government uh, regulations taken away, or tried to take away everything that he's done. But yet it's still this president can say and do and and it just takes American normalcy aback. It takes me aback, but it must I must also focus and look through the lenses of God, the Creator, our Savior. Um, I want to say this um, in regards to um, what's taking place in this country. God is still in control. God is still in control. He's absolutely in control. And what I want to do today is uh, begin with Psalms number 32. Blessed is he whose uh, transgression is forgiven, whose sins is covered. Blessed is the man who, whom went to law and pews not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. When I kept silent, my bones waxed old, though my roaring all day long. While the day and the night Thy hands were heavy upon me. My moisture turned into drought of summer. So long. I acknowledge my sins unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgression unto the Lord, and thou forgivest the iniquity of my sins. So long. 